come in your soul. See, you can't prosper till your soul prosper. You can't prosper with God till your soul prosper. I got to say it again. You can't prosper with God till your soul. We ain't talking about being rich here. We ain't talking about having a bunch of stuff here. All pastor is talking to you about right now is that you do good. That you do well in life. And you do well outside of the system that everybody else is relying on. That's all I'm talking about. So if you, if you are against that, then you're against living. You got to do the right thing. 30 and 19. Read it to me, somebody. Real good. Ready? Read. Stop right there. What, what did he say now? Say that one more time. So heaven and earth is a witness to this. Is that what he's saying? All right, let's read on now. Wait a minute. He set something in front of us. What did he set? So life ain't just there, is it? And death is not just there. But both of them is. Now then, he also gives you something to do. It ain't left up to him. He left something up to me that I've been trying to leave up to him. Lord, I want you to bless me. He said, bless yourself. By blessing yourself through the law of my word, I am blessing you. But you have to bless yourself. <laughs> See, if you, listen, can't nobody just curse you. You know that, don't you? You really bring the curse upon yourself. See, so neither just happen. I got to give invitation to it. Talk to me now. This is a good church service today to be in. So he called heaven and earth to record this day I've set before you life. I've set before you death. I've set before you blessings. And I've set before you what? The curse. So what he says here. Let's read it now. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So then if I want life with blessings, how I'm going to get it? Everything starts with a choice. Everything starts with a choice. So really a lot of things was wrong with us as Christians in the church is that we don't have the discipline to make good choices. We really don't. We, we, we want it, but we don't want the price that it costs to get it. And all it is, is controlling yourself to choose what you want. I want life. He didn't even tell me to pray for it. I want blessings. He didn't, right here, he didn't say pray for it. He didn't say choose it. Man, how easy can that be? Just choose what I want. Lord have mercy. That helped me right there. Most of what we're waiting for in life is really just waiting on us to choose it. You really don't start getting blessed in life till you choose to be blessed. Now, it'll make you a little weird. Huh? You'll get, you'll get a new script for life that you ain't been used to reading. Yeah, you, you, you'll get a new strip. It's going to bring a new strip to you that you ain't used to reading. And in that new strip, God say it'll put light inside of your soul so you can prosper in a way that nobody can control it but you. Now listen to me. Men sleep collectively, but they wake up individually. So some people in this service, they're going to wake up all by themselves. That, that means it might not be a group waking up with you, but you'll be woke. You'll see it. Because all light is, is understanding. That's when God say uh, the, the, that my word is a lamp to their feet. 
a light to the path. What is he talking about? He said, my, my word bring understanding to you to give guidance and direction. And if there's anything we need guidance and direction in, it's the way to choose to be better in life. Talk to me in here. So set before. So this next blessing that's coming on your life, it's not coming by chance. Huh? And you ain't taking a chance. You're going to make a choice. Now, that's going to be a little bigger than what you think. You watch and see. You know, that, that word choice going to grow on us in here today, won't it? How many of you feel it growing already? Yes, I do too. Let me get on with it. <laughs> Praise God. Now, let me just reference a few things for you, please. Let me do it. Because what we're trying to do is cause these truths here to make marks in your soul. We want to etch in your soul. Mark you with these truths that nothing can get it out. Uh, the first thing we said to you, that the tithe simply mean a tenth. You can't tithe but a tenth. Amen. Amen. Anything above a tenth is your offering. Then we told you that the misconception about tithe was people say that you should not tithe because it was under the law. We agree. It was under the law, but it was before the law. It was in the gospel and also in the episcopals. And the church shall say. I gave you scripture reference last Sunday to show you that all was true. Amen. Abraham in Genesis 14, 17 through 20 he tied to Melchizedek before the law. And the Bible said he tied a tenth of all. All. He took the spoil and he gave Melchizedek a tithe of all of it. I need to come back to that for a reason too. Because the Bible said, consider how great this man was. That Abraham the patriarch gave tithes unto him. Consider that this man had to be somebody for Abraham, the father of the faith, to give a tithe offering to this man. And the Bible said he, had beginning, he didn't have beginning of the days nor uh, end of life. We don't know who his family was, where he was born, where he died, none of that. Then the Bible said he was likened to the Son of God. Is that right? Praise God. So then we showed you Leviticus 27:30. It said the tithe is holy. This is where trouble come at. And the church have to wake up to this. If God mocks something holy, that means we can't do with it what we want to do with it. Now, I say the misconception is this. Number one, we call our tithe. But it's really God's tithe. So really what he's doing, he's letting us manage something that belonged to him. So in a sense, yes, it's our tithe to bring it. But it's his tithe by claim. Amen. That right? It's our time to do what? And you know he gave a designated place to bring it. So your, your tithes must have a storehouse. Listen to me. And the tithe went into something greater. Didn't it? That's good insight, ain't it? Listen, you better see that because people say, I, I, I gave my tithes to my grandmama. I gave my tithes to my cousin. I gave you, come on. I mean, and people do a lot of things. Are you listening to me? That are good. They're not bad things. But that is not the destination or the designation for the tithe. Because God has sanctified it for something greater. Huh? He give you something to, and he entrusts you with something to, to do something with him that will be greater than ourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when you turn and do something with the tithes that the Lord told you not to do, or that you choose to do, because remember, he trusts you as steward, he lets you handle it. Huh? But when you do something with it that it was not sanctified for, Deuteronomy 26 said, and I have not given your tithe to the dead. 
So whatever you do with it that wasn't sanctified as unto God, by it, he called it, you, you gave it to the dead. Meaning nothing will come out of that. Lord, I use your tithes to, to buy myself a pair of shoes. He said, you ain't going <laughs> to, nothing ain't going to come out of it. And they're going to hurt your feet for sure. They're they going to they, they gonna hurt your feet for sure. Uh, you will get coins from that pair, or bunions or something for sure. Give me some help here, somebody. Huh? Why? Because you can't give God's tithes to the dead. Come on, stay with You know, I know y'all made out of the right stuff because you hang in, if you hang in here on these teachings here, then God already doesn't get you to your next wealthy place. Because, see, some people don't want to even come to church. What pastor teaching on? Oh, he's talking about tithes. Well, I don't want to deal with that. I'll just wait till you get on something else. You crazy? You are. Right there you are. Because what you want to sit under is what God empower your life by. See, see, your spiritual life is hidden in Christ Jesus. You don't need no spiritual blessing. You're already blessed. But your social life is exposed before man. And in our social life, God gives you influence. The Bible says a poor man can't influence nobody. Though he is wise. He's wise. He got the wisdom, but he lacked the influence. Because influence comes from God. And you cannot take for granted the measure of influence God gives you. That means he give you the ability to move people to listen to you and to add heed to what you say. That's a blessing. And we have to be very careful because Satan want to rob everybody of their influence. He wants you in a place in life where nobody want to listen to you. Include all your family members. That's the first people you want to cut off from you. Because your ministry with God always starts in Jerusalem. At home first. Home court is where your ministry started. Come on now. The Lord didn't wake you up this morning to scold you now. He's just trying to get something to you here. He's trying to get something to you. All right? So when you, so then if I, if I give the tithe to something that I choose to give God's tithe to, I ain't going to talk about non-tithing because you already know, just like how many know when you don't pay your taxes, what Uncle Sam say? Now you can hold it, but here's what happened. The meter turn on. Interest and penalty popping daily. Where do you think Uncle Sam got that from? The Old Testament. Uh, no, not 10%, 20. When you don't pay it, it's 20. It's called interest and penalty. <laughs> Come on. That's 20%. Are you listening to me? Guess what? When you use God's tithe, that's what happens. You owe him 20%. Where's that at? In the Bible? It's in the Word. Right there in Leviticus. If you use it, God said, that's all right, you use it, but the meter clock just went on. <laughs> Compound interest. So what he's saying? He's trying to discourage you from messing with something that's healed. What is he trying to do? How many of you know if it's going to cost you 20%, you ain't in a hurry to keep bothering that? Come on now. Let me go on here. Give the Lord a good hand praise somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Ma shala bele bosa kele basita. Listen to me, this will save your household. It'll save your household. This ain't games we play. This will save your household. Hallelujah. 
Over half of divorces that take place in our nation take place over money. I ain't talking about lack of communication and, 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 and you know, the major things that cause divorce, communi la lack of communication, sex, and so forth. This money is why half the marriages of our nation don't make it over nothing but lack of money. So you got to talk about money, but we got to talk about it from God's perspective. And unfortunately, that's difficult to do even with Christians because, listen to me, what you believe, your outlook in life has been shaped by something. Huh? Experience, authority figure, relationships that you've been in, and who you were under that gave you guidance have shaped the way you believe today. Unfortunately, when the words start coming to you, it starts challenging every one of them. It starts challenging everything you done learned. It starts challenging who told you. Woo, Lord have mercy. And that's where you get in trouble with black people because you start trying to tell them that something is better than what mama told them. You ready for a fight. You don't talk about my mama. I know it. <laughs> but God will. If she taught you wrong. You talk about your daddy too. I say he'll do it. With no apology. So tithing was under the law. Yes, before the law. Yes, then in the Gospels, because Jesus showed us, he said, you ought to do that. But you also need to show mercy, then he said. Then now go to Hebrews 7, because there was something we read that we didn't, we read out of that, but we didn't read it to you, because we wanted to show you there, it said, uh, 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 Mel Chesedek received tithes for Abraham, consider how great that man was. But also here we need to see that tithing is received by Jesus today. That Jesus has a ministry to receive the tithe today. Amen. Now, so, you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not no, God is not cursing his children. How I many you feel good that the Lord tell you that? And you know it so. That God, done, he ain't going to curse me. I mean, praise God, he loves us. He ain't cursing you. The, the father is not out cursing his children. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's a blessing to learn that and a blessing to receive it. But when you take that holy thing and don't deliver it as the Lord said, then the devour, wherever the tithe is at, the devourer is there with it. Wherever the tithe is at. The devourer stand there too. So if the tithe is in your house, the devourer stands there with it. If you yield the tithe to God's designated, sanctified purpose, the devourer has nothing he can do against you. Here's what happened. If he moved, God rebuke him. If he moved, God rebuke him. He tried to move towards something in the home. God rebukes the devourer. What rebuke means? He said, stop him. Stop. He moved against your income. Stop. Here's what God will do. If the enemy attacks your income, you are tied up. All God going to do is say, I got you. And he sustains you. Listen to me till the shift take place. Them can't do nothing about it. We win any direction. So listen, if you if you you have committed to the things of God and you're in a financial test right now, don't fret. That's the first thing you do. Don't let anxiety and apprehension get inside of you to cause you to do something dumb or stupid. What do you mean by that, Pastor? When you start saying anything. 
Because everything starts with this tongue. The blessing starts with it. And the curse starts with it. Life starts with it. And death starts with it. One of the reasons why he want to get you over in that place is because he already know he can't stop you legally. He got to get you to stop yourself. It's called shooting yourself in the foot and then wonder why you got pain in your life. You shooting yourself. Huh? I mean, let me tell you what shooting yourself is. How many want another scenario there? Shooting yourself is thinking that you can get two jobs, three jobs, and make it and don't tie. Boom. What happened? Just shot myself. Boom. <laughs> what happened? Just shot myself. Because that's all that is. You're going to have pain with no results. Because Spiritually speaking, you can't have three jobs and stay on top with God. Something's going to wear you out. Huh? One of the blessings of the tithe is he teach you to work smart. You got principles working for you along with your energy. You ain't just working on energy. That spell burnout eventually. Mentally and physically. Then, of course, that always lap over to other areas of your relationship. Beginning with God first. Why you ain't in your word? Why you ain't praying? God, I'm tired. He say, why you tired then? <laughs> Who got you tired? Come on now. Now, as I'm telling you not to work hard, whatever we do, we should do mightily as unto the Lord. Are we saying that a, that a, a, a tilt scale? Huh? It's an abomination to the Lord. Everything needs balance, don't it? For harmony in it. All right, now. In Hebrews 7, let's see how Jesus received the tithe. How many of you glad that Jesus want to receive your tithe? Anybody in here besides me? Come on, who else is excited that Jesus received my tithe? You ought to shout about it. You ought to get happy about it. Because whenever he receives something from you, it's always an exchange to you. You get something back. And the something always is better and bigger than what you gave. Hallelujah. Always. Better and bigger. Amen. Come on, say it with me. This next blessing that's coming on my life is not by chance. It's by my choice. My God, you ain't a victim to nothing then. Because all you do is choose and God says, I'll meet you at your choices. You choose, he's going to meet you at your choices. Hallelujah. Blessings is running ahead of you. Favor is already in front of you. Hallelujah. The open door is waiting for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was thinking about it. You know, that ark, that, what ark should that is? That ark was a, is, is is a shadow and a type of Jesus. It saved Noah from the flood. It saved his family from the flood. Come on, talk to me. And it was the same waters 
that was drowning everybody else that Noah rolled upon. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. That a God can take the elements in the earth that, that is suffocating people and afflicting people and give you a law to use it. Hallelujah. Huh? You use the very thing that's meant to be evil. He show you how to get the best out of the worst. Look with me now at verse 7 of that particular book, Hebrews 7 and 7. You got it, church? And it says, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And he would have tried to tell you, without any argument, without any argument about this, talk to me somebody. The less is blessed by the better or by the greater. Is that right? Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> Let me go on. And here men that die receive tithes. What he saying? These men, we tell you about, they received the tithe, which was what? The Levitical priesthood. They received the tithe, but the Bible says they died. Huh? They got it. They received the tithe on behalf of the people, on behalf of God. But they still died out. That right? But there he received them. But there he received them. Who is he that's receiving something? Huh? I just heard Pastor Brock say, Jesus. Jesus is in the house. I said, Jesus is in the house. You better hear me. Jesus is inside of you when you receive him as Lord. But when you start tithing, he come in your house. He come in your house. Huh? He be in you and ain't operating in the house. When you begin practicing, not trying to tithe, you must become a practicing tither. That means you do this as a lifestyle. I think we got a lot of part-time tithers in the house in here. We do. We have some part-time tithers in here today. But I'm telling you that ain't God's way. Talk to me now. That's like you say, I partly obey what God tell me. Amen. That's what Saul told him. The first king that was rejected by God said the same thing to the prophet. He said, why is it that you didn't do all that God told you to do? He did some of it. He said, but I, he said, but I saw a spoil. And the people was making so much noise, I decided to get the spoil for the people. Because I feared them. So he got in trouble with God because he feared man more than he did God. And he lost his kingdom that day. And God said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And to hearken to the voice of the Lord is better than the fattest of ram. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. God said, when you're so stubborn about something, you might well go on and worship a calf that's made out of gold or made out of stone or big fat belly Buddha or whatever you want to worship. Come on, talk to me, somebody, because it's idolatry. God is a king that must be obeyed. He's not one of the boys. He's a king. That's why Job said, acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Acquaint yourself. Get to know who God is. And it'll bring peace to your life. Everybody want a peaceful life. Everybody want a life free of turmoil. And anxiety. And stress. 
Come on. Why die before your time? If you live stressed out day in, day out, month in, month out, I promise you we're going to bury you. Stress make you die before your time. You know what we're at now? We're in a stressful society. People are under stress. Talk to me. And they won't help. You don't have enough money, it can stress you. Listen to me. When you can't pay your bills, it can stress you. Huh? When you don't know where the next coming from. You can't plan. That's where Jesus come in at and receive your tithe. Now, when do we receive them? When I stand up here and receive them from you. Just like men represented him back then, men represent him today. Amen. Today, same way. Huh? We receive them as unto the Lord, and we dedicate it or sanctify it to the things of God. Hallelujah. Now, what happened when you tithe? Seven things, seven reasons why you should tithe. They'll say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for receiving my tithe. Ain't, don't that take the slack out of you, don't it? Because you ain't saying, huh, take it. Huh? You ain't even coming thinking he need it. Because the less is blessed of the greater. God said, wait a minute here. Get that attitude out of you. That I need your tithe. How many of you know this? When you don't give it, he still do his thing. Amen. Give me some help now. Amen. I don't blame you. I wouldn't make a lot of noise right there. But let's be honest. Amen. What stop when you don't tithe? No, he'll find another way. He will always do that. But that will exclude you of your privileges and benefits that he had allotted towards you. Don't you fool yourself that when you don't do what God tells you to do, he raised somebody up to do it. Saul didn't do what God told him. He said, oh, that's don't worry. I got David already waiting over there. And there's a David always standing in the shadow, waiting on us to decide we ain't going to do what God said. You don't like that. I don't blame you. I don't want to shout over that either. Think somebody standing waiting on me to not do what God said. But David was in the corner waiting. God already had him ready. Huh? The motor was running. Give me some help, somebody. <laughs> yeah, he ready to shift gears. Which one? Thank God that Jesus still received tithes today. That's why you ain't got to worry about what you're going to wear. Somebody praise him right there. Come on, I ain't going to stop right there. Come on, praise him right there, though. Say, thank you, Lord. I ain't never got to worry about clothes on my body. All right? That's why you ain't got to ever worry about where you're going to stay. Somebody start praising right there. Listen to me. Listen to me. You will never be without shelter. You say, wait a minute, Pastor. Oh, I didn't say you might. You may have to move sometime. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't that, you, it wasn't that God couldn't provide. He's teaching you something on the move. Listen, that you won't get standing still. So he lets you move to learn it. Oh, yes, indeed. But you will always have shelter. You and your children will never, you will never be on the street. Somebody ought to praise him in here. Listen to me, because that's better security than social security. 
that may not even be around in 10 more years. But I ain't waiting on no benefit from the government to anchor my faith in it. I'm standing on the psalm that said, David said, I, am, I was young and now I'm old. But never have I seen the righteous forsaken. Nor their seed begging bread. Nothing that's associated with me or connected with me in any way can be a beggar on the street. Impossible. Listen, that ain't arrogance. That's rights. That's knowledge. That ain't braggado. That's knowing who I am in him. What did we tell you the service is today? Empowerment zone. This ain't feel good. Just do good. And it worked for all of God's children. It worked for all of God's children. We don't have to work like an elephant and eat like an ant. I'm going to invite you to stand just for a moment. I'm getting excited. I need to cool off for just a second. <laughs> Let's give God some praise, everybody. Come on now. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout about it. Come on, somebody shout about it. <laughs> Come on, somebody shout about it. You may be seated. All this, uh, and all that's around a dime. And when you ain't willing to tithe, you tell it God, God, you ain't worth a dime. That's what you're saying. Now, you wouldn't say that to his face. No, 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 you wouldn't. You're bad, but you ain't that bad. You wouldn't say that to his face. But when you ain't willing to tithe, you're saying, God, you ain't worth a dime. That's what you're saying to him. You say, you say, well, pa Pastor, you just don't understand. It be tight for me. It will stay tight for you until you get this revelation. Tight don't loosen up because it's tight. You have to discover something that take you out of that loop. And we're showing you how to live by principles, not by stress, not by depression. Not by anxiety. Not by worrying yourself all night, all week. Over what you can only earn with your hands. God want to be your partner. And in order for him to partner with you in the social life you live in, there is obedience, not a prayer you can pray. Not no fasting you can offer. It will take nothing but nothing shorter than obeying instruction. So your next blessing is not coming by a chance, but by a choice. You ready to write down seven reasons why you should tithe? The first one is, number one, tithing allows us to partner with God in the earth. What a, what a privilege, what a, what a blessing that I can not only call Jesus my Lord, I can say he's my partner in the earth. I'm a partner of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you say, what does that mean? That means whatever I do for a living, he will take a vested interest in it. She says, what is that saying? You know what that language means. If God takes a vested interest in what you do for a living, listen to me. Everybody on, in the company can be a heathen. It still will be blessed because you are in the company. 
God won't let that company fail for one reason. You are there. Just like God blessed the whole nation, Egypt, for one man, Joseph. God said, I'm going to bless Pharaoh, I'm going to bless Joseph, I'm going to bless Egypt, I'm going to bless Potiphar, I'm going to bless every Egyptian because of Joseph's sake. Listen, we don't, because we don't, you know, we have been watered down so bad by our society, we got you know, every, we got it and don't know what we have. So because we've been watered down, we not only have it, we shame of it. You got everything and believe you have nothing. Ida Hosa told me this. How many know who Ida Hosa was? Great apostle in the earth, world changer, world changer from uh, Africa, Nigeria. He told me years ago, he said, he that has Christ, Andrew, has everything. He said, now that you possess Jesus, you got everything you ever need or want in life. And I started thinking about it. When I got Jesus, I got joy. And I pray for joy. Joy just came inside of me. When I got Jesus, I got peace. I didn't pray for peace. Give me some help, somebody. When I got Jesus, I got good self-esteem because he said I'm righteous in him. I didn't pray for righteousness. So I start seeing the real qualities of life when you get Jesus that come inside of you. Now you got what people trying to buy it in a package, snort it up their nose, smoke it in their mouth, drink it down their throat. They're trying to find every kind of way they can to feel better. But joy, unspeakable, full of glory. Don't tell me joy don't make you feel good. Sometimes I can't stop praising his name. Don't tell me peace, pass it, don't pass understanding. Sometimes in the middle of all that's going on, I can rest and don't worry about nothing. How can you do that? He is the Prince of Peace. He is the joy of our salvation. So I submit that to you again. If you get Jesus, you got everything. Even if you don't know how it works in your life, you got it. I say this next blessing that's coming on you. I see it coming on you too. Oh yeah, I see it coming on you. But it's coming because you're choosing it. You ain't even, be listen to me. God don't raise you up to be a beggar. Give me some help. You don't even have to beg him or man. So you ain't going to beg for a blessing. You're going to choose it. And it come on you. Coming on you. Oh, hallelujah. Choose life. Choose life. Choose blessing. That both thou and they see. I have to watch that. Because the choices I make. Inevitably, my children will be affected by it. Oh, that's sobering, ain't it? It would be something else if you could just choose all by yourself. But God said, whenever you choose, your children are in the loop. So choose wisely. Choose fearfully. Come on, talk to me. Choose soberly. When you choose the tithe, you say, I'm bringing a blessing on my house. I'm bringing a blessing on my children. Right now, they don't even know what it is or what it means, but it's coming on them. Because I'm a tither. I ain't trying to tithe. I am a tither. Hmm? I know you got a good job. But they can kick you out of the, out of the <laughs> like a soccer ball. 
All they got to do is get mad at you one day and you gone. And they don't care about how many years you done banked in there. But I've been here for 15 years, so what? Get out of here. Why? You've been late three times. Late three times and I've been with you for 15 years. Yes, get out of here. That's how much you mean to it. Ah, oh, but when God picks you up. Ah, oh, but when God make a commitment to you. Listen to me. How many of you have messed up since God been your daddy? How many of you have messed up since God been your papa? Listen what he say, but I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I got you back with your crazy self. I stand by my man and I stand by my woman. Man, I've seen God standing by you when you were so crazy. And the rest of you won't say amen, but that's all right. I know you ain't always had good sense. There are some crazy moments everybody has. But I'll let you go today because you're in service. <laughs> Say it with me. This next blessing that I'm receiving right now is not by chance. It's by my choice. It's by my choice. <laughs> That both thou and thy seed may live. I'm choosing for some other people that ain't even in the choice uh, decision making process. They ain't even in it, but I'm choosing for them. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Let, let, I can tell you some of the rest of the faith pastor, give me the rest of them six. I'll do it. I heard you say it too. <laughs> write down, write down that I'm a partner with God. Write down Romans 10, 13 through 15. You know what that says, don't you? Huh? Romans 10, verses 13, 13 through 15. What that says there, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he's sent by God? Every preacher ain't sent by God, is that right? So the Bible says the one that they can hear is sent by God. Amen. He can't even preach effectively unless God sent them. He sent me here to preach to you. Give me some help. St. John 3, 16 said, God so loved the world. What did he do? He gave his only begotten. What did he give his son for? The world. The world. So when I help the world hear the message of salvation, I'm partnering with God. You listen to me. The reason, listen, salvation was free. But to get the message to people, you got to have some money. Why? Scripture say nobody listen to a poor man. You have the wisdom without influence. And nobody listen to you. Talk to me. Huh? All right. Number two. We should tithe because we love God. That should be your motive. That should be your motive, not out of command. Talk to me, somebody. How I many you know we we you, we done threaten you? We we done you know everything else, and you still won't do it. Come on, talk to me. So threaten people and scaring people and all that don't get you into walking in revelation. What we're telling you, God called you to do this out of relationship with him. Listen to me. And if you don't do it, he don't curse you, but you come up under the curse. Why? Because the curse is already in the earth. What did he say in Deuteronomy 30 and 19? Heaven and earth record that's set before you. Where is it set at? Right before you. What did he say that's there? Life and death. What else he says there? So do God have to curse you? No, it's right there. And do God have to bless you? No, it's right there. Either one I want, what I got to do? Choose it. When you choose not to tithe, I ain't got to tell you what you choose. You choosing to come up under hardship. Economically you are. But I pray, pray all you want to. That ain't going to get you out and under the curse, praying. What gets you out and under the curse is the choice. It's a system. It's a system. It's not a preacher. 
It's a system, it's not a church. It's a system, it's not a city. It's a system, it's not a nation. Listen, when I was in the Congo, I wasn't at home. I'm talking to people that can't even speak my language in Kachessa. And you know what I told them? God, God has no respect of person. The Bible said he respect men who fear him and walk in righteousness in every nation. So what I told them, I told them what I'm telling you. If you will choose, God will bless you right here in Conchessa. And I saw something that I thought only happened over here. Africa start getting up, bringing money, putting it on, <laughs> come on, talk to me, on the altar. And I don't know where they got that from. See, you think that there's something we do called TV and preachers. They, without ever seeing that, start getting up, putting money, throwing money on the altar. Because I told them, it ain't got nothing to do with where you live at or the color of your skin. It's a system. You work. Not a handout you beg for. This was strong today, wasn't it? But poverty is strong. It's ruthless. The man who told me that, he said, I, he said, I am, he said, I was confessing to be a millionaire doctor by word, by the scripture. He said, now my accountant testify I'm one. He said, but to this day still, I have to fight poverty because it still try to come out from under my feet. Because it's determined to come back on my life. And I'm determined to keep it under my heel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can get lax if you want to on revelation that God show you. The very thing you get lax on will come up and overtake you. I was just talking to him yesterday, Dr. Bakra, in Nigeria. And he told me, that you have an open invitation to come to Nigeria and preach whenever you want to. Anytime you want to come. So needless to say, you know I'm going to Nigeria. I got to go. I promised them at least 30 times and didn't come. I said, truly you must love me. Because every time I made a commitment to come, something happened. He said, I have leadership meetings every month. I'm going to give you my calendar, and I'm expecting you to come. And this is the man that ran for vice president for Nigeria. You never know who you're hosting. Now the man he ran with is president of Nigeria. Glory to God. Abraham blesses the mind. Come on, talk to me, somebody. <laughs> Listen, you know you're blessed by who you know, don't you? That brings blessing to you. You know the right person, it opens doors for you automatically. You've been blessed today. Let me give you the rest of these things. You write them down. I, I won't try to preach them to you for time's sake, but listen to what it says here. The next one is that I say you must love God. You should love God, right? Isaiah 1 and 19 says, if you be willing and obedient, what happened? You eat the good of the land. So your motive for tithing should be, out of, I love God. You ought to love who love you. Right? Then number three, you tithe to God in obedience. Because the word says so in Malachi 3 and 10. You tithe out of obedience. This is the third reason why you should tithe. Because you obey in obedience to the word. The fourth reason, we tithe because it calls people to be blessed and it support the local church. Nothing is more important to God than the local church. Amen. You say, why? Because he built the local church himself. Amen. The local church should be supported, right? Huh? Amen. All right. How I many you know how you support the local church? Come to church. <laughs> Come to church. 
You support the local church by coming. You got to show up. And then when you show up, don't be a pain. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Bring something to the house. Bring some good attitude, right? I tell you, I'm through preaching. All right. <laughs> Number five, it fulfills the Great Commission. Matthew 28, verses 8, 18 through 20. Why should I? Seven reasons why I should die. Num number five, it fulfilled the Great Commission. Look at that. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm doing that now. Amen. With a door open, I go. I'm going places I've never been before in my life. Amen. I'm scheduled to be in England next month doing another leadership conference in Birmingham, the same place where they got a statue built to Satan. I was there one uh, last year and the year before, and, the, uh, and the, the pastors from all over the globe voted for me to come again to speak with Apostle, me and Apostle Alfred. They voted for me to be the, the guest speaker that speak with him, him in the uh, 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 seminar for the pastors again. The same was in Congo. They voted for me to come back next year. It's a committee of men that come together and they decide who they want to come. So this three years straight, each one then asked me to come back. Amen. Voted. Amen. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. How can you do that? Everybody ain't going to go to all the world. Everybody ain't going to go to Africa. Everybody ain't going to England. Everybody ain't going to the different places that the Lord is telling me to go. But you help send me. You send me with your prayers. Listen to me. Even if you ain't got no money, you send me with your blessing. Praise God. How many of you know it's only the first time I went, you all helped with the ticket for me to go? Because since then, they send the ticket themselves now. First class. Amen. They pay for the business uh, class ticket now. But y'all pay for the first one. So you are part of the first fruit. So when we see all those pastors' lives being impacted, come on, I can't talk for nobody else. I can talk for me right here. When we see all those pastors from different places, life being transformed and changed by the taught word, then they go back to their churches. Many of them churches have thousands and thousands of members. I'm telling you, but it's something they want from this ministry. And it's, I get, because the Lord told me, it's the, it ain't because I'm a better preacher, but I'm going to say what he tell me to tell him. And I can't say what he tell me if I ain't hearing him tell me. Just like I'm telling you what he's telling me to tell you. Give the tithe to him. You ain't going to suffer in this e economical flood that's coming on this globe. Globally. You better have hope in Christ. And then you do your due diligence in the land. But we ain't banking on no human being to be our protector. For the Lord is our king. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. He will save us. Number six, we should tie expecting and believing God to honor the promise in his word to bless us and prosper us. And number seven, we tie because we need increase, we need protection, and we need a blessing. 